What could be more natural and picturesque than this? Chickens foraging around to find and eat bugs. But for a huge number of chickens, this is not the reality. Many of them never see a bug, and they eat almost exclusively commercial chicken feed. And the main source of protein in most commercial chicken feed is soybean meal. Now, I'm an advocate of feeding chickens a good quality commercial chicken feed as the main part of their diet. See my video on how I choose chicken feed. The modern commercial chicken feed is a nutritionally dense feed that is precisely formulated with all the best balance of protein, fat, vitamins and minerals to support the high productivity of today's commercial laying hens. What's more, it's readily available, convenient to handle and store and easy to use. But although the feed is arguably good for chickens, all that soybean meal comes with some disadvantages. Growing soybeans needs a lot of land. Large-scale farming of soybeans uses lots of pesticides and water and contributes to deforestation and other environmental damage. There are concerns about genetically modified soybeans. And most soybeans are grown in North or South America, so unless you happen to live there, that's a lot of food miles. But soybean meal has one huge advantage. It's cheap, so it's used a lot in a lot of products as well as chicken feed. There are other possible sources of protein for inclusion in chicken feed, including animal meat products and fish meal. These can also provide good quality protein and minerals for chickens. But animal products make for expensive feed for other animals, and there are some concerns about disease. And fish meal comes with its own concerns about ecological damage and ever-increasing costs because of overfishing and a demand that exceeds the capacity to maintain a sustainable system. But there's another source of excellent quality protein for chickens. It has a superb balance of the amino acids that chickens need as protein building blocks, plus it has some additional advantages for the health of chickens. And, you guessed it, it's insects. Over recent years there's been a lot of research into the use of insects and insect products as nutrition for chickens. Most of the studies have been done using just a few types of insects. The most common and widely studied insect used for poultry feed is black soldier fly larva. Black soldier flies don't bite, in fact they generally avoid human contact, and they don't transmit disease. They can be grown on plant material or other organic waste material including manure, and in doing so they reduce bacterial growth and reduce the odour of the manure and suppress the growth of nasty bacteria such as salmonella. Mealworms are often fed to chickens. One disadvantage of mealworms for commercial farming is that they can't feed on manure, they prefer plant material. This is also true of orthoptera such as crickets, locusts, grasshoppers and katydids. Nonetheless crickets are easy to rear and are already farmed in thousands of cricket farms across Thailand as food for humans. If you've seen a chicken pecking at a rotting piece of meat, you might know that chickens like to eat the larva of the housefly. Housefly larva, also known as maggots, can be grown on organic waste material, including manure. And since they occur naturally in nearly every country of the world, farming housefly larva as a source of protein products for poultry feed carries no risk of introducing a new insect that might become a pest in the local ecosystem. You might have thought about earthworms. Earthworms are commonly eaten by chickens who free range, but there hasn't been much investigation into the use of earthworms as feed for commercial poultry farming. One insect larva you probably won't have thought of is silkworm larva. Natural silk comes from the cocoon spun by the larva of the domesticated mulberry silk moth. The caterpillar grows from a tiny black egg to 7 to 10 centimetres long in just 4 to 8 weeks. 
Then it spins its silken cocoon. When the silk is harvested by unreeling it from the cocoon, the larvae themselves are a waste product as far as the silk industry is concerned, but an excellent and very cheap source of food for chickens. All of the study results have certainly proved how good insects are for chicken feed. Of course, the chickens like them. Several trials have shown that chickens actively prefer a diet that contains insects compared to a soybean meal feed or even in preference to corn. The amino acid profile of insects is even better for chickens than the profile of soybeans. When soybeans or other vegetable protein sources such as rapeseed, ground nut cake or maize gluten are used in chicken feed, some particular extra amino acids such as methionine have to be added in order to make the final formulation optimal for chickens. Poultry feed made with insect meal is already closer to perfect for chickens. Much of the exoskeleton of insects is made of a polysaccharide called chitin. Chitin is not easily digested by chickens and so there has been concern that that's a disadvantage. But chitin is partially digested by chitinase, an enzyme found in the chicken's digestive system. Chitinase digests chitin to substances called n acetyl d which boost the chicken's immune system. There is evidence that chitin in the diet helps the chicken resist infection by pathogenic bacteria, possibly due to short-chain fatty acids such as lauric acid, which has been shown to prevent diarrhoea, and dodecanoic acid, which has an antimicrobial effect on gram-positive bacteria. Chitin also has a prebiotic effect, that is, it encourages the growth of beneficial microbiota in the chicken's digestive system. Overall, chickens do well on insect protein. Broiler chickens fed a diet including protein from black soldier fly larva grow just as fast or faster and with no adverse effect on the taste or palatability of their meat. Layer hens, whose feed included black soldier fly larva protein, lay more eggs with darker yolks and thicker shells. Stronger shells are considered an advantage in commercial egg production because it reduces losses from broken eggs during collection and transport. Most of these studies have used insect meal, that is ground up insects, or protein extracted from insects. However, a few studies have been done using whole or even live insect larva. In one study, black soldier fly larva were scattered into the litter of broiler chickens. The findings were that the chickens did a lot less sitting around on their hocks and spent a lot more time standing, walking, foraging about, pecking and scratching around. We probably could have guessed that. But the study also showed that this extra activity was associated with better leg bone development, fewer leg problems, less lameless, and fewer cases of hock burn. That's a horrible situation caused by the heavy youngsters just sitting around in their own excrement so much that the ammonia burns the skin on their legs. So feeding insects not only improves productivity, it also improves the welfare of the chickens, a combination which is unusual. Often there's a conflict between increased efficiency and what's good for the chicken's well-being. From a commercial point of view, farming insects for eventual use in animal feed makes good financial sense. Farming insects doesn't take up much space because these six-legged livestock are small. You can legitimately raise insects in high-rise multi-tiered containers because insects naturally don't just live at ground level. Insects have a high feed conversion rate. It takes less resources to farm insects than other animals for the amount of protein product that they produce. Farming insects takes much less water than it takes to grow soybeans. In fact, in most cases, insects don't need any additional drinking water at all over the moisture in their feed. Insects don't contribute so much to ecological damage, and they produce almost no greenhouse gases. 
Insects are relatively easy to raise organically, and they are tolerant to a wide range of environmental conditions. For example, although mealworms are most productive at a temperature of around 28 degrees Celsius, they can survive up to 48 hours at temperatures as low as minus 15 degrees Celsius. And insects can use as a food source a whole range of materials, including byproducts, waste products, and even animal manure that is actually a problem that needs to be disposed of. Insect larvae grow very fast. In less than two weeks, the larvae increase their body mass by 5,000 times. And there's almost no waste during harvesting. Almost all of the insect is edible, compared to only about 50% of the carcass of pigs or cows. So there is potential for insect agriculture to become big business, and therefore for insect products to become very cheap ingredients for chicken feed, quite likely even cheaper than soybeans. So why don't we see chicken feed that contains insect protein? You might wonder whether people could be uncomfortable with the idea of eating a chicken or eggs from a chicken that has itself been eating fly larvae or other insects. But a 2015 study in Belgium showed that education could very quickly overcome any squeamishness about eating animals raised on insect protein. A bigger factor is that at present there are not many sources of commercial volumes of insect protein, and so the price of insect products is still higher than soy products, at least for now. And part of the reason for that is a rather confusing legislative context. It varies around the world. In the US, it is permitted to feed fresh black soldier fly larva to chickens and other poultry. In Canada, whole dried insect larva can be used in feed for chickens and other poultry. In Africa, Asia and Mexico, farming of insects is commonplace and indeed quite a lot of insects are included in the diet of humans, let alone chickens. So there are very few restrictions to get in the way of feeding insects to chickens there. But the situation in the UK and Europe is different. Their farmed insects are classed as farmed animals, just like cows. And there are strict laws about what is allowed to be fed to farmed animals. These laws were introduced in 2001 in response to bovine spongiform encephalitis crisis, which you might know as mad cow disease. One of the main causes of BSE was the use of cattle feed that included animal proteins as a protein source. Now, cattle are naturally herbivores, not carnivores. They don't normally eat other animals. So using animal products in cattle feed was clearly a bad idea, and the results were disastrous. So laws were introduced that limited the ingredients of animal feed to only materials derived from plants or eggs or milk. Anything made from meat or any other part of a farmed animal was banned from being included in feed for other farmed animals. And because farmed insects are classed as farmed animals, that means farmed insects were not allowed to be fed any meat products. And insects or products derived from insects were not allowed to be fed to other farmed animals, including chickens. However, chickens in a free-range environment find and eat their own insects. So forbidding the use of insect products in chicken feed was pretty weird, or as they say, a legal anomaly. Finally, on the 22nd of June 2021, the European Parliament endorsed a change to Annex 4 of Regulation 999-2001 so that it is now legal to use processed animal protein made from insects in feed for poultry in Europe, and the UK is following suit very soon. So, poultry feed containing insect protein products is likely to turn up on the shelves of your local feed store in the next few years. It's going to be cheap and very good for chickens. Meanwhile, you and your chickens can take advantage of all of these studies by including insects in your chicken's diet. You can raise mealworms for your chickens. 
I have a video about how easy it is to do that. You can locate your compost pile in your chicken run or just throw a few odd bits of plant material into their run and let them have a compost pile of their own. You can avoid using insecticides in your garden. Yes, that means you'll find a few unwanted bugs on your crops occasionally, but the presence of the insect life will attract birds to your garden, which is a joy in itself, and rather than poisoning those pesky caterpillars, you can simply pick them off and feed them to your chickens. And if the other factors allow for it, you might be able to free range your chickens. I have a couple of videos about your decisions about free ranging. If your chickens do free range, they have the opportunity to find their own insects to add to their diet. I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, and by the way, the music that I use for most of my videos is actually called Claudio the Worm. Bye for now.